Hi, Coach Seiji here from uh, Coach Seiji Headquarters. This is my home office at the ranch in Harwood, Texas. Uh, this is a, my first video article for RacerX Virtual Trainer. I want to go over something that I learned the other week at the American College of Sports Medicine Conference in Denver, Colorado. It has to do with injuries and how nutrition and uh, a little bit of use can help you get over those injuries much quicker. Um, bad news first. So the bad news is with immobilization and disuse, you know, when you get injured, you have to hold that part of your body still and you're just not training. You can lose up to 5% of your muscle mass just in the first two weeks. That's super bad news. And it takes three times the length of your disuse to get that muscle mass back. So that's all the bad news. Um, a common thing that I think elite athletes do when they do get hurt is they think to themselves, oh, wow, you know, I'm not training, I'm not moving around as much, I'm just sitting here. Uh, so they'll reduce their caloric intake to help maintain their body weight. Uh, that's actually bad for your healing. It's kind of a reverse psychology you have to get used to thinking. Um, your basal metabolic rate is the amount of energy that you need just to live every day, uh, kind of the daily you know, normal activities of living. Uh, it, that's called your basal metabolic rate. That's your calorie burn for a normal day of your life, excluding training. That basal metabolic rate will go up 20% with any serious injury because your body gets super busy trying to heal it and that costs a lot of energy. It can actually go up 50% with surgery because that's major trauma. You get cut open, your body has to fix your skin, which takes a ton of energy. It has to fight infection and so on. So that 50% increase in basal metabolic rate can happen with surgery. So it's really important that when you're hurt and you're coming back that you maintain a positive energy balance. You have to keep eating. You have to keep eating, in most cases, the normal amount of food that you would uh, during training just to give your body the energy it needs to build all those new tissues and get you healed up. Um, we're going to do a little more bad news. Um, the immobilization that happens with most injuries where they're going to cast you or splint you and you just can't use it because of pain, that makes your tissues, your bone, ligament, tendons, and muscle insensitive to something called an anabolic stimulus. Now, anabolic stimulus is any stimulus that signals your muscle or your other tissues to grow. Training is an anabolic stimulus. Eating food is an anabolic stimulus. Um, for whatever reason, when you hold something still and immobilize it, it becomes kind of resistant to anabolic stimulus. The good news part of all this is um, the study that was reviewed in the class that I went to. Uh, their injured subjects took in 16 grams of essential amino acids, acids with 30 grams of carbohydrate three times a day between meals. Now, an essential amino acid is an amino acid, which is a uh, the parts that make up proteins that your body cannot make from other proteins so you have to eat them. Uh, the short of it is you have to eat complete proteins, all different kinds of proteins, you just can't take one kind of protein. Uh, the protein that they used for this study uh, to get those 16 grams of essential amino acids was 30, or I'm sorry, uh, milk protein. So whey protein is uh, very bio, uh, bioactively available. It's very uh, good protein. It's uh, a part of a dairy protein. They used a uh, protein supplement that included whey protein. Again, it's three times a day between meals, so it's almost extra food. It was 600 calories of extra food on top of what they normally would eat to try to maintain that positive uh, energy balance to speed healing. So those amino acids, the essential amino acids, plus the extra calories, 600 extra calories, um, kind of stunted that disuse atrophy. It totally slowed down the protein degradation, the loss of muscle mass, uh, things like that during the healing process. Then as part of this study, they added very low volume contractions. This is very low. It's only 20 contractions every other day at 80% of one repetition maximum. So very low level. I mean, every other day you do 20 contractions of uh, the muscle surrounding the injury. Um, you know, of course, in some injuries, you can't do 80% of, of your one rep max. But in those cases, it also showed that even low-level, very light contractions using electrical stimulator help to combat that disuse atrophy. So, uh, oh, and another thing, they found that omega-3 fatty acids, which are found in fish, uh, avocados, flaxseed oil, things like that, you can take a fish oil supplement, 
uh, increase the anabolic sensitivity. So taking fish oil, which to me is one of the best supplements you can take. It's one of the few supplements that I personally recommend. Uh, the fish oil helps your body uh, to receive and react to the signal to build uh, tissue. So when you do eat and when you do those contractions when you're injured, the fish oil increases your body's sensitivity to those stimuli to help get some tissues built, help you get healing, help you get down the road. So bottom line of this uh, study was a very long lecture, very clinical. I'm going to boil it down to this. When you're injured, you want to let go of that thinking that you're going to gain weight and and know that your body's metabolic rate is increased uh, increase quite a bit because building new tissues to fix what's broken is very costly to your body. Um, the other two points I want to be as a take home point are you want to get all the essential amino acids when you do eat. Um, I would rather you get them from eating you know normal natural wholesome foods. Um, the short cutting is taking uh, 16 grams of essential amino acids with 30 grams of carbohydrate you know in a supplement or make up your own supplement mix uh, three times a day between meals. Um, this, uh, this is kind of the shortcut way of doing it and that very low level contraction if you can do it in your situation. So 20 contractions of the affected muscle groups every other day, hardly anything, 80% of, of your one rep max if you can, and if you can't, any amount or any level of contractions will help offset the loss of muscle and the weakening of tissue. So. Um, that was a very important uh, session to me. I'm glad to have gone to that session, and hopefully it helps you guys out. You know, injuries is a part of this sport, as we all know. And if uh, you can just use my take-home points, those three take-home points I just stated, uh, you'll get back on your bike faster, heal up much quicker, heal up much more completely. So that's it for my first video article for RacerX Virtual Trainer. This is Coach Sage here signing off from uh, home office at the ranch. Thanks for tuning in.